Hi, my name is Helga Maus from Pixel Train. In this second part of my tutorial series about point movements, plexus effects and trails inside of Houdini, we want to talk about plexus effects. A plexus effect is connecting points, which are often moving, here with these line grids to have a nice wireframe. So let us start. In the first tutorial of this series, we built a point moving generator out of a warp. In this tutorial now, we want to connect these points with lines and we want to render them. There are different approaches inside of Houdini and I want to give you some of them so that you can decide which approach suits best in your daily work. So the first idea would be to use an add node. Normally an add node is used to add, for example, points or polygons to a data stream. But you also can use this to make edges and edges and lines are the same inside of Houdini. If we switch here to the polygons here, we have two options and this is a little bit strange from people from other 3D applications, so I want to explain this really short. If you look to the tabs here, these are not only options, these are activators. You see this little dot here? This is a button. So if you switch here to by group, you activated this here and it's not only a switching of different kind of options, it's really a functionality button here. What we search is exactly here. We want to make polygons out of groups of points and the result is a really messy mesh here, like you see, because now the sequence of our points is connected with lines here. And if you want to build polygons, this is fine, but we want to have more control about this. We have a little bit of control here by the add function. You see all the points are now connected and Houdini uses here the point numbers to connect these points. If you want to change this, you have some options. You can, for example, build out of all these points groups of n points. That means, for example, if I go in here and say only one, then you don't see a line anymore because yeah, you need for a line a minimum of two points. But if you then take two points, you see that you get a connection between two points all the time. I look around if I can show you one. Yeah, but you see here, for example, a really short line which connects 118 with 119 and then it starts again and again. So this is a interesting thing. You can skip points. You can select them by attributes and this is maybe something really useful. Attributes are little data packages you can bind on different kind of geometry, for example onto points, onto primitives or whole objects and you can use them for many different kinds of manipulation inside of Houdini. I add here into this data stream an attribute with an attribute create to demonstrate this. And this attribute create here, if you select this here, it packs a new attribute with the name attribute one into the data stream. You can see it here in the geometry spreadsheet. If you go to the points here, that you have now here a new attribute, which is a float number. You can name this attribute, for example, with CD. CD is a name which is used a lot in Houdini because it's the color we have, for example, for the points. And in the moment you add a CD attribute here, and I make it with a size of three because we have three channels, RGB. So you will see that all the points get black because the default value here is zero and the value I give them is also zero. But if you go now in here and say, I want to change here the three channels, one and here 0 0.5, for example, 0 0.5, you can color now these points. And this is the attribute. This attribute CD now travels this pipe down and comes to the add node here. And inside of the add node, we can use such attributes. Yeah, if you now, for example, select this here, we can tell use the attribute CD. That doesn't make too much sense in the moment, but you see the color comes through. Let us do something more useful. I go out here and I delete the attribute create and use the attribute 
randomize function, for example. So I can tell the system, okay, I want to have this CD on the points and we get here a random color. Okay, this is really, really colorful. But what we can do is we can tell the system, I want to have only two values. And for this, I only need a dimension of one. So now every point has only one of two options, a value of zero in the CD or a value of one. And the probability is 0 0.5. So 50% of them have zero and 50% have one. And you see this here in the geometry spreadsheet. And this is something we can use now in the add node. So you see now that if you use now the CD attribute, only connections are made inside of the same attribute. You can see it better because the CD makes the lines black, so we use gray here as a background color. You see we have now two different streams of these lines and if you want to change this or animate this, we can go here to the randomize and change, for example, the probability of these two values. This is one idea how you can use something like that. But you see, the use of this is really limited. So move it to the side and we use a much more powerful node. And this node is named Connect Adjacent Pieces. Connecting adjacent pieces means that it looks for neighbors. And you have three different kind of options you can search for neighbors and we want to search for points which are in the neighborhood so we switch here and instantly you now see this nice wire grid the two options we use now is the search radius so in which search radius around a point we want to search for a neighbor and if you lower this now you see that you get less and less connections because they have different distances. And if you press play, you see this node runs all the time and connects now the points if they are close enough. If you have a really big search radius, you run into the problem that you get too many connections. And to help you here, we have a maximum search points attribute. So you only allow, for example, 20 connections so that you don't run into problems. So these two values are really nice way of building such nice wireframe plexus effects. So the next step would be how to make this here, if you like it, randable. The nice answer for this is Mantra is a really clever renderer inside of Houdini. That means if Mantra sees lines without the polygons or so, it can render them. So if we now set the display flag here on this connect adjacent pieces and go to the renderer and press here render, it takes a while to generate the scene and then it renders, you get something like that here. Looks strange, but yeah, these are lines. We don't have an information on our lines how thick they have to be and so Mantra decides okay they have a standard thickness of one and yeah this looks a little bit messy but we can give now Mantra these informations and to do that Mantra uses an attribute and we have seen attributes in action so we can use now our knowledge directly here. The attribute it uses are p scale or with both work. P scale is meant for the viewport, with is meant for Mantra, but they work vice versa. So we take a attribute create here, hook this up, and like I've said, we want to use the width attribute. The width attribute is a float, it sits here on the points, and if you take a look here, it delivers zero in the moment. That means we have a width of zero. And if we press render now, all the lines are gone instantly because now 
the lines have no thickness and it runs extremely fast. And now you can go in here. The renderer still runs because we didn't cancel it here. So we can now add here thickness and I think I start really low 0 0.01 for example. And you will see, okay, now the lines are really rendered. And we can make them a little bit smaller here so that we get a nice wireframe. And here we are. Now we have a nice line rendering without creating geometry. And that's the advantage of this technique. That we only have these lines here, but we don't have any geometry here, which we here have in the viewport. You see, it's really heavy here, 4749 polygons, but this is not so heavy because these lines here are not tubes or something like that. And this is the next step. Sometimes you really want to use polygons. And we will take this approach in the next step. First, I want to show you another interesting thing with the width attribute. The width attribute is stored on the points. That means from every point to every point we have width. And what we can manipulate is the width attribute for every point. So these lines are in the moment all equal. But if we change the width for every point, we get lines which are not equal anymore. Let us do this. Instead of an attribute create, we use our attribute randomize node here. Okay. We do width again. Okay. Take it down to 1. And this time we have a value between 0 and 1. Really dangerous, so 0 0.02, for example. Let us render this. Voila. You see now really thick lines and really thin lines because they read the values from the points. I make them a little bit smaller here so that you can see that also the value of zero here is really used here. And this is something I don't want so that your line really vanishes. So I make a minimum value here of zero, zero, one, for example, so that the lines are never really unvisible anymore. So, like I've said, this is a really flexible approach. You can render this, you can color it in After Effects or Nuke or whatever. Yeah, it's really fast. But now, we want to go really the route here to polygons. Or polygon tubes, better to say, because these are polygons, but yeah, they don't have a tube or something around. For this, we have two nodes. One node is a really simple one. It's a wireframe node. If you use this here, you will see that instantly you get a really fast setup here. And if you hold down now the middle mouse button, like I've said, you now have much more primitives, 14,000, because now you get really a shape around this. And here, at this point, we only had 4,000. So you see a much higher polygon count here with the wire, but still really fast. We have here the wire radius, which we make smaller. And also we have here some options like round corners. If we have open lines we had before, we can have end caps. And yeah, it looks like that here. The problem with this wireframe node is that you get sometimes here a little bit strange connections, which sometimes make problems in the rendering. We can try this. Yeah, it looks, like I've said, sometimes a little bit weird. But if you are not too close to the wireframe, then it should work. Yeah, you see. This here is something which we can use. If you need more control or better control, you use the Big Brother, which is a polywire node. And you have to be careful with this. So I go in here and lower a little bit the amount of 
connections here to 30 and then we go to the pulley wire here wait a moment and let this calculate wow it looks really cool <laughs> but yeah the problem with the pulley wire here is that uh, our wire radius is extremely big in the moment so make it small again and like I've said the problem is that this node here really generates a really nice mesh you see here and the joints are really better but yeah it takes more time you get a much higher polygon count here 380,000 this point and you can now go in here and yeah, change the options here how this mesh is generated for example we have here division what helps to make these tubes rounder and we also have segments here and so on and we can also scale here the segments you see here there's a little expression going on you can use your own expressions and this is um, yeah also a really good way to make these grids here but yeah from the polygon amount perspective it's a little bit more expensive I hope you liked this tutorial and we see each other in the next session. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train.